You've probably heard before that a weapon, like a sword or a knife, is just an extension of your body, an extension of your arm, an extension of your fighting ability. And in the same way, a website is the extension of your sales efforts. You have to practice, you have to hone that skill, and you need a structure to understand how to do it the best. And in the sales process, what I find the best structure is, is BANT, B-A-N-T. This is the most effective because it's a great way of structuring your thoughts, structuring your questions, and helping you to make better arguments on your site so that you can build more sales more quickly and naturally. So today, I'm gonna to tell you exactly what BANT is, walk you through each part of this acronym, the B, the A, the N, and the T, aren't you lucky? And then I'm gonna tell you exactly how to use this on your site to increase your sales and traffic. My name is Trent Canelli. I'm a marketing strategist, and on this channel, I talk about all the things that you can do to improve your business through marketing, sales, and analytics. So if that sounds good to you and you're excited, make sure that you like this video, comment, and let me know what your current sales process is like, if you even have a structure at all. A lot of people don't, so no worries if you don't. And then subscribe to my channel if you're into it, and let's get started. Okay, so what is BANT? BANT stands for Budget, Authority, Need, and Time. This is a sales qualification tactic that asks prospects questions based on these four categories. And so what it's trying to do is tease out whether the lead is good, whether this is a good thing to continue with if you need to change the person that you're targeting or if it's just not even worth going with this company. And I know that this sounds like a one-to-one -one or one-to-many face-to-face sort of a conversation that we're having here, but what I'm doing is I'm taking this concept, BANT, and I'm turning it on its ear, and I found that this has been very effective on websites as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the questions that we ask here, we're gonna answer them ourselves as much as we can, and then we are going to use those ideas on the website. So let's go through these one by one here, just so we can ask the questions, understand what they look like from a direct sales perspective, then we'll get to that conversion question near the end. First question is budget. So budget is always gonna be one of the first things people ask. They always wanna know how much, but it's not always about actually how much it is. A lot of the time, it's about the value that they associate with the price. And so if you can show that you're charging $297 and you have $500 or $1,000 worth of value, then they're gonna be able to pay and they're gonna find that that's worth it. If you're charging $297 but you can't prove more than $50 worth of value in their mind, then you're less likely to make a sale in that way, okay? So just keep in mind that this is always about a value to price comparison, not just the number on the page. So if you're asking the questions, if you're broaching the subject of budget yourself, what you wanna ask are things that are kind of around that field without coming out and saying, how much are you gonna spend? Because that's a little bit abrasive. Nobody really likes that. They think that you're not in it for them and they're more likely to leave instead of complete with a sale, okay? So questions like these. What are you currently spending on the problem? How much would it cost you to create your own solution to the problem? How much will it cost you if you haven't fixed the problem in five years? What is your expected outcome from a budget perspective? What's your expected ROI? What's your expected uh, CPA? What other KPIs do you have that you really wanna focus on to make sure that this project is a success? So you can see that these are budget questions that are designed to get at the full picture without actually coming out and asking them the question. Now, when we look at it from a website perspective, you're gonna see that these are still very helpful questions because yes, they're not direct, but they're still gonna give you that range of answers because you're probably not gonna have direct answers to those questions. Authority asks the question, am I speaking with the person that can make this decision? If you're not, then you need to go higher to get to that decision maker. So a couple of examples for questions. What does your decision making process look like? Who else is involved in your decision making process? What is your process for determining success on projects like this? And what you're effectively doing, you can probably see, is teasing out any names of people that are probably gonna need to be involved in the decision in order to bring them into that conversation. But more importantly, what you're doing is you're identifying the target for who you need to be going after in an organization to get the most out of the sales process. And that's really gonna be what's more important for the website side. Next question is need. So here you're trying to figure out the level of need they have or the level of importance that they apply to the project. So it could be that their need is slight or it could be really strong. And that difference is gonna influence very strongly whether you're gonna continue with them or whether they continue with you. So a couple question examples here. What motivated you to look for a solution at this point? What happens if the problem isn't solved? 
How important is this project to your continued success? What steps have you already taken to solve this problem? You can probably see at this point that we're really focusing in on what the needs of the consumer are and how we can best pinpoint those arguments so that we can get at exactly what they need, exactly when they need it on the website. Last element is time. Time is a factor in every single decision that we make. So it is absolutely vital to determine with the prospect whether their timeline is realistic and whether you can meet their deadline. So a couple question examples here. Is there any event that this needs to be completed by? How does this play into future initiatives? What resources do you have to meet this timeline? So you can probably see from these questions, that what you're trying to do is pinpoint a typical timeline for these customers so you can figure out either how you can argue to say that your timeline will always be met or how you can say, all right, well, maybe I need to change my timelines or what arguments you need to make to convince them to come in and be comfortable based on a time perspective. All right, so we're a digital marketing channel. How do we apply this to a digital marketing environment and put that sales stuff aside for a moment? Well, what did I just do actually? I just took an ideal customer avatar and I flipped that on its ear, right? Because Band is asking questions that are meant to identify your customer. Now, if you want more information on ideal customer avatars, check out this video here. But just that summary really quickly is, it helps you to understand who your customer is so that you can identify how to speak to them better and get more sales out of them, okay? So while you're also looking at the data in this situation, don't think of it as separate from an ideal customer avatar. Think of it rather as an add-on or a plugin <laughs> that goes along with your ideal customer avatar because this is helping you identify specific things about your customers so that you can write to them more effectively. Because remember that the point of a sales page and the copywriting on the sales page isn't just to talk about the benefits of the product or service that you have. It's also to answer the objections that people are gonna have before they even know that they have them so that those just dissipate and you have less of an issue getting people to that sale. By planning, it becomes a lot easier to identify objections and really head them off of the pass so you don't have to worry about people coming up with them and leaving before you've had a chance to counter them. So let me give you kind of the basics of framing a page so that you can understand where I typically like to put these. So first, I'll put broad information at the top to help them get an idea of the offer and I really use this section to speak to the most important parts for the target audience. Then I give more detail as I go down the page. The second section is typically another full width section with text only and a button, and that'll have more detail about the product or service. Then after that, I'll give what I call dancing columns. And so it'll be an image on the left and text on the right, and then text on the right and an image on the left, etc. And that's where I handle the objections. So those objections are gonna be reframed as something more positive and not something so negative. So let me give you a few examples. All right, so I'm gonna give you an objection and then I'm gonna give you the anticipatory copy. So what I'm doing here is I'm anticipating what the objection is gonna be and I'm writing copy that is going to counter that before they even have the chance to say otherwise. So objection, I don't like the color. Anticipatory copy. Our phone cases come in dozens of different colors and patterns. There's something for everyone. Objection, the value for money just isn't here. Anticipatory copy. If you're not 100% satisfied, we have a 30 day, no questions asked, money back guarantee. Objection, too expensive. Anticipatory copy. You'd think a product like this would cost $4,000, but we're selling it today for only $297, an incredible deal. Now that last one is price anchoring. And price anchoring is where you set a high price in someone's mind and then you shatter it with a much lower price, which increases the likelihood that they're gonna buy, okay? But I wanna really caution you here that if you do this one too much, you're gonna to lead to brand dilution, and brand dilution is where people actually value your product or service at less than what you say it's worth, which leads to overall people buying from you less. So just be really careful of that. So I'll put those questions in my description for B, A, and N, T, so that you can have those ready to go and nice and easy to access. Make sure that you also check out some of my other awesome stuff on my website. I have a free coaching that I offer once a week to companies that are in need. Otherwise, I have paid coaching if you're interested in that. And I have a free 2021 Marketing Trends Guide. I think you guys can get a lot out of. So make sure you check that out in my description as well. Otherwise, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to my channel if you're into it, and I'll catch you in the next one.